Hello, everybody. I'm Jim McMahon, and with me is Gorilla Mezzo. Hello, hello. We are not here for JFW today. No, we are here for Blood Bowl. We have some leaks that no one else has. You will not find them anywhere else on the internet except right here, Mr. Jimmy Fantastic's YouTube page. We have a bunch of Blood Bowl 2020 teams leaked. We're going to break those down right now, Jim. Take a look at some of the changes in the rules and uh, analyze uh, what's going to be different for these uh, teams. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's look at, the, look at the teams. The teams are kind of good to look at first because they show you a lot of the changes straight away, don't they? So you can straight away see that the stat line has changed. Um, so, it, well, the passing, right, so we've got movement, strength, the same as it's always been cost everything else the same uh, but then agility is now a three plus which is similar to what they've done with warhammer and uh, well not warhammer is it age of sigma and 40k rather than looking up on a chart you just get the starting um thing that you need so agility three has essentially become three plus and agility four has essentially become two plus uh, there will of course still be modifiers and um, but it seems to have included the natural plus one that you used to get from that you mostly used to get for making an agility roll has been rolled into the uh, initial agility stat. Then we've that also got most needlessly. That was one of the most needlessly complicated rules. The plus one to make a dodge for no reason. <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, and it was crazy having a chart and everything. This is much better, much cleaner. Yeah, brilliant. Um, <laughs> PA is passing ability. So this is a kind of a cool way to nerf elves, essentially. <laughs> but yeah, uh, because it was what was silly about elves was their agility for, and especially when they got plus agility, their passing was insane, their, their, their movement was insane, like, you know, their freedom of movement was insane, and their passing was insane. And there was kind of no point in throwers. So th this means that they can have people who can't dodge well but can throw great and people who can't throw great but can dodge well. And that's the same kind of thing. They've taken away the natural plus one for a short pass. So things like um, halflings that used to have agility three and pass on a three plus, um, now pass on a four plus, of course, halflings used to have a minus one. So that was a terrible example to start with. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, I'm looking over at that goblin team there, and I'm seeing in the PA uh, category, like on a loony and a fanatic, there's a dash. What does that mean, Jim? That means that they can they can attempt to throw, but it will automatically be a fumble. <laughs> Why so, would they do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, hey, I guess it's good to say this player cannot pass the ball. I mean... But, uh, well, I guess the Fnatic will never actually be able to hold the ball anyway. But, That's true. He has uh, no hands, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I, the fact that you do have the option to fumble the ball is a weird one. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I, I, I guess that's it, right? They can't pass it, but at least you've got the option to fumble if for some reason you wanted it. it maybe he's going the crowd or something to get to scatter like you could... Yeah, I mean, they could they could still hand it off, too. Yeah. But they just can't make a passing uh, action. Yes. Without fumbling. <laughs> yeah. And then armor. This seems a bit pointless, this change. I, I like the, the agility because you're stopping rolling on a table, but the AV, there was no table. It was just your armor six, you need a seven plus. Now, they've, I guess, so I guess that's, they've done it. So, yeah, okay, fair enough. It has yeah. done away with that. You, that's less one less cal calculation. You don't need to say, oh, they're armor six, I need to beat it. You just say the armor seven plus to beat it. Yeah, this is one of those things. It's just uh, to me, it just cleans it up a little bit. This isn't really anything I think anyone couldn't have figured out on their own. But like sometimes when you're like looking at like, especially in Blood Bowl two, when you're looking at like the dice log, it can kind of trip you up when you're like, okay, he's armor seven, but I really, but really, you need, you need eight plus. You know, it's just like a way of thinking about it. I don't mind it going into the columns there. Um, but we will have to come back to uh, AV breaks <laughs> yes. later on in this conversation. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's funny, funny thing. So so looking at the teams, yeah, um, in this case, uh, let's start with the Halfling, seeing as I'm there. <laughs> um, in this case, Halfling's stat is actually completely unchanged, except they, no, they lose passing as a double skill. It, passing is no longer an option for them at all, and quite a lot of players have lost the option for passing on a double. Um, presumably, yeah. it's still a double. It is primary and secondary rather than singles and doubles, but presumably it's the same, but we don't know that. 
for sure. Um, so they have lost the ability to pass, but the, the stat line is essentially the same because they did have the minus one for passing. Um, Halfling Hefties, on the other hand, uh, are, pre are also pretty much unchanged, but they are a bit better at passing. Catchers are a bit worse at passing, but mostly unchanged. But here we get to a not really a big change, but a kind of interesting change in that we've got 5k increments for player costs. What do you think about that, Gorilla? Uh, I think uh, that doesn't really change much for me. I mean, I, I guess it just makes uh, makes setting your roster uh, that much more uh, complicated. Yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't seem to add a lot to me, in my yeah. opinion, either. It seems a bit pointless and it, not really big. It game. would be really interesting to see the breakdown of the players um, that got that 5,000 bump up or bump down to see kind of where their thoughts were at. So I don't really know the halfling team from the 2016 edition. Uh, did hefties and catchers exist in that version? They did, yes, yeah. Oh, they did. Okay, yes. Yeah, I hadn't I hadn't caught up on the halfling team there. So I don't know. Is, is that a bump? I assume that's a bump up for the catchers. Then, I, believe a it's a, I believe it's a bump down, but I'll be honest with you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, not a team I'd really paid attention to. And if you go over to the Goblin side, the same thing with the Pogerer. That's a bump up, I believe, right? Yes. 70, yeah, 75. That's a bump up. That seems pretty expensive for a Pogor. Yeah, especially as, okay, he's still got the plus movement, but now he's worse at passing, and you know, as well as losing right stuff. And uh, also the Trolls have been bumped up, but they do get a little bit better. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, looking at the Trolls, this is another rule that's been revealed. They are Lona 3+. plus. So now mm. Lona, um, the number in brackets, always dictates what it is. Lona is no longer a 4+, plus to be able to use a team reroll. You could have Lona 5+, plus like a star that's been revealed. You could have Lona 3+, plus like these guys. You could have Lona 4+. plus. So that's that's interesting, isn't it? Presumably you could have yeah. Lona 2+, plus and Lona 6+, plus as well. Absolutely. I actually really like that. I think it, it lets big guys, like a guy, like a big guy, like... Uh... I don't know. I'm going to throw this one out there like a like a uh, I won't use a Yeti because I know how you feel about Norse, but like a Minotaur, right? Like a Chaos Minotaur. Like the whole part of the big reason you don't want to use a Minotaur is because you got a Blitz with them. So then you've got that two plus roll for Wild Animal, assuming that still exists, and then you're blitzing with a big guy that's a loner. But if that loner's a three plus instead of a four plus, that kind of eases the pain a little bit of having to do that. I kind of I kind of like the way that works. And I, who knows which big guy will get what now? I'm just spitballing yeah. ideas there. But I, I, I personally like that not every single loner is the same. Um, what I wonder, though, and I don't know if we have confirmation on this yet, uh, Journeyman and Mercs, are they all base 4 plus, 5 plus, something like that? I believe Mercs are all 4 plus, yeah. Okay, so that doesn't change much then. That would have been pretty rough if they had changed them to a five plus and let let all the team based loners be three pluses and four pluses because then you're like really at a disadvantage having to take uh, journeyman and and uh, mercs uh, coming into a game. Yeah, that's true. And actually, I forgot to say. So yeah, then but there's also the both t both guys, the treemen and the trolls, both have mighty blow plus one, which implies the possibility, of course, of mighty blow plus two as a skill or mighty <laughs> blow plus three as a skill. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I, I would wager that it's in there as a qualifier, but yeah, it's possible. Maybe even it, maybe even stackable. That seems like a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But again, with piling on, most likely gone? Question mark. Yeah. Um, stacking mighty blow. Maybe that. Maybe that offsets it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like being able to stack Mighty Blow would be too powerful, and I feel like Mighty Blow plus three shouldn't be a thing, but Mighty Blow two could be super rare for stuff like Morg. Uh, also, Dirty nice. Player has the plus one. Now, if Dirty Player could stack, good lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, se it seems crazy to be able to level up, doesn't it? To get 16, yeah. get this, like, well, yeah. an Ooligan's... Oh, yeah, Ooligan's got a lot better. They lost fan favorite and got Dirty Player... Um, yeah, which is, I, I, I recall the day they announced them, that was what you said should have happened. Yeah, yeah, I was like, this should, the DP should be dirty player, not disturbing presence, yeah. but now yeah. they've kept both. Um, and yeah, and they're really bad at throwing for no apparent reason. 
<laughs> so uh, two other things I'm noticing on this page, we've got tier costs at the bottom. I assume that roughly translates into the values that like a system like NAF uses. Yeah, um, tiers we when teams were first invented by, by well, not by, well, no. When the, B, when the Blood Bowl Rules Commission took over Blood Bowl, they decided in their not-so-infinite wisdom to make Tier 1 teams, they, dis, they arbitrarily decided, would be between 45 and 55% win rate. Tier 2 would be between 35 and 45, and Tier 3 would be below 35. So, All right. I'm presumably. sure they did a lot of testing to really hammer those out, too. Hours. Literally hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then also continuing on at the bottom, we've got these special rules by team. Uh, things like this Halfling Thimble Cup, an old world classic. Looks like we're going to have two different types of uh, team-based special rules. One that are team special rules and then regional special rules as the, as we'll see listed later any uh, any feelings on those right now jim yeah it's interesting isn't it it looks like it's going to be some kind of rule for leagues or something um so yeah that old world classic that looks like it's going to be old world kind of teams can then compete in some kind of league together the halfling thimble cup is revealed to be the rule that gets halfling chef sticks discounted for halfling teams mm -hmm. that's what that is and it could be something else as well right but that's yep. that's that's certainly so we, what that does. Badlands Brawl, so we we've got no idea. Bribery and corruption is the is the same then for the goblin team. Yeah, yeah, we, it's it's pretty safe to assume that bribery and corruption is going to be the fifty k bribes. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty safe to to assume. Uh, you can see there as well. Trained trolls have uh, projectile vomit as a skill, which. Um, again, we've got no idea what that does, but it's cool that they've got it. River trolls have that, don't they? So. Um, yep. that's that. So that's that's the first teams. That's that's pretty much them sorted. All right. So those are our two. Those are our two stunty teams. Which one of those do you favor coming out of this, Jim? It's a good question. Um, Halfling's got a lot of buffs, but uh, I think starting with a dirty player is actually pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it sure especially is. if you can get the bribes for him. I think that could I be a, a big buff to goblins, and uh, they both benefit from the passing nerf to other teams. So yeah, but putting 65k into a uh, into a goblin is a little scary to me. It's a little much, but it's only 25, right? It's still less than the double. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, so I, I would always have him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, black orc teams, not to be mistaken with the orcs and goblins teams of old. What do we got here, Jim? Yeah, this is in the this is in the actual box set. I'm pretty certain that this is the box set team, new plastic team, and it's like if you took lizard men and took two movement off every single player in the team. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound great. It doesn't, does it? <laughs> it looks Our, like. <laughs> Presumably they've got the cheaper bribes, right? Bribery and corruption. So presumably they've got cheaper bribes. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, Black Oaks have got grab, but they're more expensive. Um, their goblins are only a tiny amount more expensive and have thick skull. So that's really nice, actually, isn't it? 5k for thick oh, wow. skull is incredible, actually. Incredible yeah. deal. Um, but we've got no idea what Brawler does. Uh, no idea at all. A lot of people are positing that it could be something to do with a special rule that was for one named Ogre Team, but that's really irrelevant, isn't it? it? You know, Brawler is something that could be a rule that's nothing like an old rule called Brawlers. <laughs> yeah, or it could be a rule that we already know to exist that, uh, like, it could just be, you know, Stand Firm renamed or something like that. Yeah, it could be anything, yeah. <laughs> you know, who, who knows? Who knows? Uh, grab one of your favorite skills, though, Jim. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not the best. Do you know what else Brawler could be? Um, there was there was talk of there being a skill that negates guard. Well, that's exactly what Brawler could be, couldn't it? Oh, that would be that would make a bit of sense. Yeah, uh, and it would it would really help offset that. You know, oh, you can have six of them at least, not just four. But yeah, yeah having uh, six strength four movement four guys. <laughs> Uh, it makes it, it it makes their uh, their strength four a lot more valuable if you can't guard into them. Yeah, so it's a possibility. Like anything's possible at this point. I'm not claiming that to be the truth. Um, anything is possible at this stage. Sure. So yeah, I think uh, I 
I don't think I love that team all that much just because like uh, having six black orcs would be pretty fun. I'm not going to lie. And again, depending on what brawler does for you, but, uh, boy, do I not like having to line up a bunch of goblins behind them with, uh, no strength three, you know, to carry the ball. <laughs> yeah. And the troll being, being, uh, you know, really stupid. That's a big nerf from like a you know a Croxagore in a in a lizard man team. <laughs> like yeah. they don't get anything extra to lizard men because the li- because the goblins cost more and the black orcs yeah. cost more than than Blood Bowl twenty sixteen lizard men at least. They end up yeah. with two rerolls. The starting team is two rerolls, and <laughs> you know it's not great, is it? <laughs> or I guess yeah, no yeah, troll. I mean, you could start yeah, without look- a troll. You could start without a troll and have three rerolls. I guess. I mean, unless projectile vomit is uh, really, really, really good, I'm gonna guess it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that looks a rough team. I mean, it says tier two, so they expect it to not be very good. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. No. Oh, here two huge teams uh, here. Yeah, two two actually real teams now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's two. have a look at the Shambling Undead Gym. One of my favorite teams to play personally. Oh, are they? Well, they've. This is really weird. Zombies can only fumble. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot pass. <laughs> they cannot get passing skills, so they cannot increase that. <laughs> they cannot increase their ability to pass. Like they can't give themselves plus one or anything. Because they could potentially get a stat up, and then maybe that stat up would turn that dash into a six plus, which would be really exciting to do. Not Could you imagine to... taking a six plus pass on a zombie gym? No, I can't imagine anybody <laughs> taking PA as a stat increase ever. I can't even say that skeletons become slightly more appealing because they can six plus pass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I still would prefer the zombies personally. Yeah, yeah. So that's. Um, it's a really harsh change, though, you know, because a four plus quick pass, it can happen, you know, you can. Yeah, like, sure, you, sure, sure. You can, zombie can catch a scatter and then he can have to pass, mm-hmm. and the fact that he can is gonna suck. <laughs> I actually think it's actually worse that the whites are a five plus. Yeah, that's brutal. That, that's the thing that really kills you because sometimes, like, you only get four ghouls, they're gonna go off the pitch. Sometimes you need to throw that white back there if you're trying to do, like, a two turn after a rough drive or something like that and you don't have any better options like that i mean not now now you're definitely putting the ghoul back and you got to make the uh the extra gfi with the white to offset it but um that is brutal to me that they are a five plus not a four plus yeah Um, really i really i think what gw is saying with this build is that if you're playing undead, you should probably abandon any hopes of a passing game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, and, you know, like, uh, Ghoul's going from a 3-plus short pass, uh, quick pass to a 4-plus quick pass. That's already, like, a big nerf for them, isn't it? Um, Stunties were untouched by that. But yep. they, they've taken, they've you know, the skeletons have lost, like, two points of agility for passing. <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> zombies have lost three points of agility, like the negative agility for passing now. <laughs> yep. um, and uh, lost two tools going crazy. up 5,000 as well. Yep. And mummies going up 5k as well. Oh, that is brutal. Yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty harsh for Undead. I mean, Undead were the absolute, you know, one of the absolute top 1k TV teams. Yeah, so. absolutely, yeah. So this is um, fine. And it doesn't affect what's them in your enough new build time. There? What, what's your build there now at a 1,000 at a TV, Jim? I've got no idea. I haven't worked it out. What, yeah, what okay. I do know is it's not going to affect them in NAF style. When NAF teams, uh, when they start with 1,100 TV, they always end up with like three fan factor. So that's going right. to totally absorb the, the increased cost of ghouls and mummies. So it's not going to affect them NAF style. Um, that's good. And it might not even affect them... Like, you know, you just drop a ghoul and a line or whatever, don't you? So it's probably not even going to affect them as a starting team either, to be honest. Yeah. And now in the special rules, we're seeing Masters of, of Undeath and Sylvanian Spotlight. We should probably be able to assume the Masters of Undeath is their res, uh, regener- ah, resurrection uh, skill. Yeah. And then whatever the regional thing is going to be is the other one. Yeah, like those and vampires, presumably, and yep. maybe Necro, who knows. Um, so yeah, so actually quite big nerfs there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's not uh, now talking about not being nerfed. Uh, probably the team to come out of 
2020 the best thus far skaven let's take a look yeah interesting so skaven line lineman or skaven clan lineman an extra descriptor in there for no reason <laughs> that's interesting isn't it couldn't they just it be is, skaven but, lineman? Wait, i will say though the lineman descriptor i like it if you notice all of the zero zero to 16 or the zero to 12s um they're all linemen now which is a which i think for learn for new players coming in will help them adapt to how to build your team a little bit better yeah that's that's fair that's a fair shout yeah but also i've just realized wordy and useless sorry i've just realized these are ghoul runners they're not just ghouls anymore aren't they yeah yeah um but they they don't have an extra name but they've got yeah, i think i think i think ghoul runners is just them being overly clever maybe yeah maybe <laughs> so yeah so the <laughs> the linemen get their passing knocked down from a three plus to a four plus they cannot get passing skills at all um so that's that's a you know a marginal nerf to linemen the blitzers like uh whites get absolutely butchered to a five plus pass which is just horrendous um yep. if they get an mvp there's no way they can just pass it to a good runner for an easy level uh, it's just horrible for them isn't it um, so yeah, that's a re real big nerf to Blitz's leveling and usability in a pinch. The Rat Ogre um, is is interesting. He has not got Wild Animal. That doesn't mean that Wild Animal doesn't exist anymore, because they could have uh, you know they could have Wild Animal and Animal Savagery. But yeah, it's gonna, yeah, that's a skill we don't know yet. Animal Savagery. Yeah, it could just be that the Wild Animal is no more. Um, yeah. They've got 50k reroll, so that's good. And their throwers are, have become oh, quite a bit more expensive, 15k more expensive. And they've got a 2 plus passing, which is like the old Agility 4 passing. So they've got better, their throwers have got better at passing for a, a decent cost. So that's interesting. And now the huge one, the elephant in the room. Gutter runners can't pass anymore. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? They've lost two points of passing ability compared to Agility 4. Um, yeah, I mean, from where I sit, having never really played Skaven and never really enjoyed playing against Skaven, I don't mind that so much because it makes the Skaven team have to rely on more than just four players every game. Uh, but I, that is... Uh, and they also, did they, they also went up 5,000 in cost too, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, that is a, that is a, a hard pill to swallow if you've been playing it. There's a lot of very dedicated Skaven players out there. Seeing your gutter runners fall off and become more expensive is... Um, people are probably not going to love that. No. However, I will say that agility is probably still the basis of catching. So they're, pro they're probably almost certainly going to be great at catching still, just not good at passing. And throwers have got better at passing. So if you really want a two-turn um, with... Skaven, then you can, you know, it's a quite, it's a substantial investment in a runner, to be fair, but uh, in, in a thrower, but you know, you could have a thrower for two turn attempts and one turn attempts, but this is the thing with with throwing being nerfed across the board. I think the faster teams are going to do the best out of that, and good runs are movement nine. So you know, yeah. I think a lot of the time they're just going to be able to hand off, do a GFI or two, and hand off. Not really going to be that much of an issue for them when it comes to winning the game. Um, it will, however, put the kibosh on uh, vanity passing for those yeah. sweet levels after an MVP. <laughs> yeah, now that being said, we don't know for sure what the MVP rule is going to be, but I think it's a safe bet to assume it'll be as it is in 2016, where you pick three, three people and roll a D3 to see it. So, you know, the vanity passing going away... Kind of not offset by, but you know, you still got uh targeted MVPing to some extent, which uh, which can kind of help make up for that, um, you know, from time to time, yeah. And there's definitely an argument that targeted MVPs plus vanity passing is overpowered, so yeah, I mean, especially when you've, you're throwing quick passes on a two plus, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So that's interesting. So I, I don't think the Skaven have done too badly out of that, and Despite you never wanting to pass with undead, I think that's a pretty big nerf for undead. Actually, they're just. Uh, I agree. I just it's just for me for undead. What'll what'll always happen with undead is you'll you'll play a really nice defense and force them to score, you know, and give you three or two or three turns 
to respond instead of one yeah. and you know you're just so much hampered by it. You're, you're you're really really set back by not having you know a three plus quick pack pass in your back pocket uh yeah. if you need to uh, make up like a deep kick against them on a on a short field you know on a on a short drive is just devastating yeah and and also when you like turn over people on defense and stuff or, or just later in games like overtimes you yeah. know you've only got six players that are agility three once you start yeah. losing those it gets harder and harder and you're gonna have to do some passes sometimes in desperation and now that just got a whole lot harder <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely it's really oh, that's really rough all right, I haven't actually seen these two yet. The human team and the imperial nobility team coming out. Um, I believe this is the last. Yeah, this is these are the last of the of the spoiled teams. Yep. So yeah, humans are just humans. They're pretty much they're a bit blurry, but they look. You know, we might be wrong on these, but it looks they look very similar. Still fifty k um, re rolls. Um, yep. Don't the linemen lose passing access? Uh, they're. Six three three four nine plus, so pretty much the same stat line with again slightly nerf passing. Throw is slightly better passing with a two plus PA there. Um, catches with a PA five plus, it looks like <laughs> I, to me, it looks like five plus. Yeah, Some people it looks have said like three plus, yeah. yeah, I think five plus as well. But yeah, so they they look actively worse at throwing and are 65k now, which is a, a nerf, isn't it? Uh, but that's offset by Blitzers being 85, which is quite cheap. And th if they got a 6-plus PA? The Blitzers? Yeah, or 4-plus. It looks like a 4-plus. It looks yeah, like a 4-plus plus. 4-plus PA for Blitzers. You know, that catcher might be a 3. No, it's got to be a 5-plus. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's a 5, not a 3. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and so, so, yeah, so the Blitzers worse at passing, but they've, they're, they've, got a, they've got a bit of money off. Um, the Ogre there... Is pretty much the same as he was, loan of four plus still, all the same teams. But he got a lot better because he's got naught to three halfling hopefuls to maybe throw. Yeah, and... yeah, that is a that's a really dynamic addition to the human team, I think. Like I don't love having halflings, but I'd certainly take one for thirty thousand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a super uh, cheap you know... It's a super foul cheap foul on turn eight yeah. or a, or a shot at a one turn, yeah. you know, throw a team. I... I got to say, though, with the changes to the passing skill, human throwers, which generally you want to take anyway because of the free sure hands on your edge, you know, on your edge three team, uh, that's actually a really big boost for them. Yes, uh, absolutely, yeah. Are they the same cost as they used to be? Uh, it are looks they... like they're 80k instead of 70k. Yeah, so, so yeah, 10k more. But, yeah, your edge four for passing effectively Um I yeah you know, I I love that you know if I was a human player uh, you know that just like it feels right because I always hate having to take a thrower for that sure hands and never having the intention of passing now it's like well if I need to I can pass <laughs> yeah and he's the only one who can and it, yeah it's it's so it'd be it really valuable on teams that were always going to take a thrower um, uh, now let me ask you a question they're zero to two. Have they bumped up into that throw raw category where it's like you have to take both of them? I wouldn't go that far, not at 80k. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think point. you have to have one for sure. Too, yep. too good. Especially as you can get leader and stuff as well. Um, yeah. And the new skill on the ball, which is very exciting. <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, humans quite quite all right there. Um, the Imperial Nobility. Oh, God. These are a weird... A weird yeah, these released team. in 2016, right? I, I never really paid attention to them because they seemed like kind of a disaster. <laughs> yeah, they were. They had experimental rules in 2016, and now they've got yeah. hours of literally hours of playtesting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now these are not to be mistaken for the Blood Bowl Two Bretonians. They are quite a bit different. Yeah, but... they're similar though. They are similar. Um, yeah, they are. They yeah. So you know, forty-five k alignment, six, three, four, four, eight plus. Yeah. Fend. Yep. Again, 45 no possibility. As opposed to forty for a for a peasant, right? Yeah, yeah. So they're a little bit more expensive than a peasant, and um, they don't have passing access even on secondary. Yeah. And there's oh, only that's no gonna be a 
friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The throwers are 75k, so they're only 5k cheaper than human throwers, but they get a 3 plus PA instead of a 2 plus PA. And they don't have show hands. It looks like they've got something else. Running pass, isn't it? That's running pass, I believe, which is a new skill which lets you com continue moving after you've passed, which seems completely and utterly pointless in my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, there's not much good out of it because, like, I assume if you fuck up your pass, you can't keep your movement going anyway. So you couldn't, it's not like if you threw a wild pass and it, the ball ended on the ground, you could move over and cover it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there, yeah, there's not a whole lot great, great going on there, I guess. <laughs> no, no, that seems, that seems horrible. Then you've got yeah. not to two noble blitzers. So they've, they've, instead of four blitzers, which, uh, Blood Bowl 2 Protonians have. They've only got two blitzers here. They're 7 3 3 4 9. Um, so, pretty much the same. Obviously, a bit of a nerf on passing. They've got block and catch, so they've lost Dauntless. They've still got agility in general. Um, they're 105k, so they're slightly cheaper, but losing Dauntless is, is brutal. And being worse at passing when you've got four catch on the team, or used to have four catch, and now you've only got two, is again terrible. Yeah, they don't have anyone on that team that can uh, that can pass like that. The three plus, why why is it that an imperial thrower is a three plus, but a human thrower is a two plus? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, I guess you're paying five k less for an imperial thrower, but like, yeah, running pass unless someone can find a really good use case for that skill, <laughs> that seems just like why would you take that player at all? Yeah, terrible. And then the bodyguards, to be fair, the bodyguards are good. Um, six, three, three, five plus. So they're really terrible at throwing, like agility one throwing. So like, yep. that's horrendous. But stand firm and wrestle. Okay, it's a bit anti-synergistic. You'd rather have stand firm and block. But yeah. um, it's still good starting with stand firm, isn't it? Even though you pay 20k for it, it lets you get more skills overall. And it's a skill that you would take eventually anyway, so it's it it is good. They're better they're better than Bretonian blockers on Blood Bowl 2, in my opinion. Yep, I agree. By quite a way. There is one more team, the Wood Elves. So Oh, I didn't see the Wood Elves yet. Oh yeah. boy. Exciting stuff. Right, so here are the Wood Elves. Um, as you can see, they've got the special Elven Kingdoms League. So this really heavily implies that it's going to be this special. These special rules are going to be regional rules for like leagues, where it's just elves or just all world teams or just green yeah. teams or whatever. My uh, my prediction, and this is just conjecture, folks. My prediction is that these like tournament league things that they're going to do are going to directly correlate to like the custom boards that they release that all have special rules yeah. so it's like if you're in the elf kingdoms league you can use the sinking pirate ship dark elf thing or you know who knows again it's just conjecture but i think i think those will kind of round up into a way that makes them flavorful with the environment yeah that's that's a really cool point and then here we've got the lauren forest treeman and um, he of course has loner because he's not a halfling treeman but also he's not allowed passing skills um, but he can't throw teammates, so it doesn't matter. But it means he can't get leader on a double. <laughs> 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 Which is important, I guess, right? You can't, you know, I've I loved having a leader Croxigor on the Elizabeth team before, and you just can't do that now with the tree man. Um, I mean, but this is huge. I mean, let, look, let's just cut straight to the chase here. Wood Elf Lyman, 7, 3, 2, 4 plus, 8 plus. They're four plus, catches are four plus, and dancers are a four plus. So they've gone from agility four passing to agility two passing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's huge, isn't it? It's huge. Huge. Yeah, move. I mean, this is just hammering home, you know, the way GW is approaching Blood Bowl 2020 here is that you have one person on your team who can throw, and you're not supposed to throw the ball. Now, that being said, we talked about this a little bit before we started recording, Neither of us are people who approach a game of Blood Bowl as being like, this is a passing game and this is how I need to win this game. So 
you know, you got to take that, you know, with a little bit of a grain of salt. Like, yeah, okay, how many passes on linemen have you made in your life? But then as soon as you need to make one and it's four plus, you're screwed. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other. Uh, you probably should be passing less than you generally do uh, to the average Blood Bowl player. But also, now you really need to plan accordingly with your throwing piece, which is, in this case, your Wood Elf thrower. Yeah. So as you can see, dancers have gone up by 5k, which doesn't affect the standard build because your standard build is like one catcher and two dancers and two rerolls. So it doesn't affect your standard build, but it will affect like some things because um, you had 10k left over before. So, you know, it obviously is going to cost more to replace them when they die and stuff. So it's, it's probably a good change that it doesn't affect the starting build, but does it impact them somehow? It mm -hmm. impacts them in a... You know, and it obviously means you can't start with a thrower essentially unless you sacrifice rerolls. So that's yep. interesting. The catches of lost sprint, which is pretty huge, isn't it? I mean, yeah. When it, when it comes to one turning, particularly, that's that's a pretty big nerf for one turning. Uh, in again in tabletop, that's that's going to be like NAF events. That's going to be pretty big. Um, and that's actually double, and that that's doubly screwed by these passing changing rules because now. You got to put your thrower back if you're going to make the get the retrieve the ball and pass it to him, and that's an extra square movement lost on that end too. If it's a deep kick, you yeah. know, normally most people would just put a catcher back to retrieve the ball and pass it up for, to the other catcher on a one turn, and that is uh, not an option really anymore. Not a reliable one. No, indeed, and their throwers get five k more expensive whilst remaining the same. Um, essentially, so that's obviously quite a big nerf, actually, because you know the other team, the other players like humans and Skaven have got a better thrower. There's just stayed the same, and it's still got a bit more expensive. <laughs> yeah, thus far, everything we're seeing really taking aim at this uh, the uh, the the uh, ability to move the ball around the pitch more freely. Uh, which uh, was generally benefited by having, you know, edge four and higher. Uh, I don't hate it personally, but again, I've never really played a, a pass-heavy team. You know, even in my edge team experience, it's Dark Elves, which are generally considered a, a running, you know, a running team compared to the other elf teams out there. Yeah, and I wonder if they're going to take that on board and like make Dark Elf Blitzers a 5+. plus. It's certainly possible that they do that now, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, interesting to see what happens to the Dark Elf Runner. But yeah, yeah that's, uh, th that is it for the Wood Elves, huh? Yeah, and that's it. That's all of the, uh, that's all of the teams we have available to look at the, at the moment. So um, all right. we'll be back with more stuff later. Thank you very much, Gorilla Mezzo. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Looking forward to more JFW Blood Bowl action, Jims. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic.